All right, so this is my friend's current barbecue situation. It could definitely use a little bit of help. So what I wanna do is use the bones that they already have here. It's a great little nook. It just looks neglected. So we're gonna wash off all this old paint here. We're gonna add cedar panels to the back to give it a nice modern look. I'm gonna drop in a eight foot countertop. We're gonna cut in their barbecue, add a little side burner. And then for the slope, we need to push it back a little bit, add some retaining in there so now it doesn't fall into this area. And they'll have a barbecue area that they'll actually enjoy using. So the first thing I want to do is start cutting back this slope so I can drop my retaining wall in. We're going to clean up all this area, get the paint off the wall, or try to, and then we'll get started on building. All right, so this is our 2 by 12 pressure treated. We have the two stakes in the back. We're going to drop that in, and then we're just going to pound it into place. And on the front side, I'm going to put a longer two-foot stake, and that way it's stable on both sides. All right, so this is my one by two. It's a redwood and it's a rough cut, so it's actually almost true to size. And I'm gonna cut this down to 52 inches because that's how tall my wall is. So these redwood strips are going to be furring strips that I attach my beautiful cedar to. And I'm going to do so with my battery operated Craftsman tools. I have the drill right here and I'm setting it in hammer mode right there. <laughs> And that's because we're drilling through a concrete wall. But even more exciting, I have a battery operated nail gun. It's a finished nail gun, which is gonna be rad because after I put my redwood fur strips on the wall, this attaches to the concrete, then I can attach my finishing piece, my cedar, with the nail gun. paint my furring strips this blue color because I have a half inch gap between my cedar strips. We're gonna see it, so I'd rather it match the color scheme. This is a rough red wood, so it's really gonna soak up a lot of paint, but this added paint will actually protect it and make it last a little longer too. All right, so I finally get to cover up my ugly block wall, which I'm so excited about. I cut and stained all my cedar planks. I used a blue, which is kind of fun. I'm looking forward to seeing how this turns out. The first thing I need to do to put these up is start with the top. I wanna level the first board as it goes up. And once this one is up here and level, I will use my 16 gauge battery operated nail gun, which I'm really excited about. And I'm gonna do one on the top, one on the bottom, and that keeps this board from eventually warping. So now that I have my first board up, I leveled it. Now I'm gonna use my spacers and tuck them underneath to line up my next board. I'm gonna do it this way and right here, tuck it in. Go. So this will give me even spacing all the way down so I don't need to measure anything. Now I'll just use the battery operated nail gun. Do one on the top, one on the bottom, that way it doesn't taco and we're good to go. So I wanna get the barbecue started and the first thing I wanna do is to cut down my two by fours. And to do that, I'm going to use my B20 cordless miter saw. It's pretty lightweight, which makes it easy to move around the job site. Now my barbecue countertop is eight feet by three feet wide and the legs of the barbecue are spread out 26 and 5 16 inches apart, but you might need to adjust your measurements depending on what size barbecue you're trying to build. Just make sure that you set the top post an inch and a half below the top of the frame and that's gonna allow room for the flagstone and concrete board to sit. Okay, so now that my barbecue is in place, I wanna start building it out. This is where it gets heavy. All right, you wanna drop this in there. So now that we have our four by fours attached, we're gonna add these two by tens on either side. And this is gonna, and this is what's gonna hold our grill. So we dropped our barbecue in. I have my support 
for my concrete board over here. And I'm adding the rest of the supports along the side. Okay, now that I have all my framing in, this lip is what I'm gonna attach my concrete board to. And I'm leaving this area open because this is where my false gavian uh, gate is gonna drop in. And now I'm gonna add some additional support along the side because when I put the concrete board in and then the flagstone, it's gonna be really heavy. So I just wanna add in some support as well as I need to frame out the area for the side burner. <laughs> I have my drop in for my side burner now. <laughs> this is the true test. Okay, now it's time to start playing with the wire. This is gonna be for my false gabion front of the barbecue. So I need a three by three section. I'm gonna use wire cutters to cut it, and then I'm gonna fit it to the space and adjust it as I need to. Now I'm going to use this 2x2 two two to curl up the edges. So I'm going to meet it at this one right here and just bend it to shape. Okay. So this is going to be the face of my gabion and I'm going to secure this in place with some furring strips like so. It'll hold it on either side, but before I do that, I can see that it's a little bit tall, so I'm going to cut it down an inch and a half. So I'm going to take this one by two, I'm going to attach it to the front here, and that's going to keep this from ever blowing out with the pressure of the rocks. If I change the drill to its softest mode, I have it on one and I have it on one here. And that's because this is thin wood, it's soft wood, and I don't want it to split. So it's going to go in very slow and very smooth. I pre-drilled and now I'm just going to drive in with these two inch screws. See, it just stops when it's done. So you can see the false gabion is coming together. I have my wire, I have my four by four that's attached to, my one by two furring strips that snug it in. And now I'm just dropping in the stones one by one and trying to organize them in a way that they won't pop through. So it's really starting to come together. We have the retaining wall here. I have all my panels. I have the barbecue area with the grill dropped in. Now I wanna focus on the top part of the barbecue, which means I'm using concrete board. You can see here, and I'm going to cut this to size using a utility knife and bending it, snapping it, and then putting it into place. Okay, now I'm taking the utility knife and I'm just gonna score the top of this and use this piece of lumber as my straight edge. drop this concrete board in. I'm going to use my V20 drill and drill in my specialty concrete screws. It comes with its own special bit and all I want to do is screw them in flush just enough to hold this nice and secure. And this is the base for my flagstone. It's fun. So I'm starting to lay out the flagstone. I want to make sure that they fit with each other really nicely before I mortar any of them down. So I'm just going to do a rough layout and there's not necessarily a right or a wrong, 
But what I try to do is I try to line up my straight edges with straight edges, like this piece right here is pretty obviously gonna be uh, parallel to this edge here, and that's a great start. I'm so excited about using the flagstone. It gives it such a natural feel, and it's gonna tie really well with the false gabia in the front. And then to fill in the spaces to alter the pieces of flagstone, all you really need is a hammer. So I'm going to use that to score this where I want to break it. Now, I want to use the front of the hammer, but instead of just hitting it like this, I want to hit it like this. And what that's going to do is that's going to create a bunch of hairline fractures along this line, making giving me an opportunity to get a clean break. Doesn't happen all the time, but... This end because this piece is almost breaking in half. And that wasn't as clean as I hoped, but it's about the shape I need and it'll still work. So it's time to throw some mortar on these stones. I laid them all out, they are where I want them. Now, I want to caution you if you take them off from where they are and try to piece them back together, you're never going to find the same exact fit, even if it changes a little bit. So, I'm just going to work section by section, which is what you want to do, anyways, because you want to work with the mortar. You don't want to work too far and then have this set up. Luckily, the temperature is in my favor right now, so I have a lot of working time. But if it was hot outside, you would definitely want to be very conscious of uh, the heat drying it out too quickly. Okay, so making sure your mortar is tacky enough. Throw some down. Sticks. We're good. I got to build up quite a bit. But you really only need about a quarter to half an inch or so of mortar minimum. But because I'm trying to reach the level of the frame, I got to build it up quite a bit to do that. Okay, and again, this is higher than my frame for now, but I'm going to use a mallet. Just tap it down. Let's see. That needs to go up. That means this needs to. Okay. Last piece. Now I just need to wait 24 hours and then I can come back and grout it. Now that the mortar's all set up, it's time to grout and I'm going to use a, it's like a glorified bag, like a pastry bag, but it's actually for grout. And so I'm going to mix up my grout. I'm using a sanded grout and the sanded is good for one eighth to half an inch uh, grout spaces in between. And so I'm just going to mix that up. I chose a color called tobacco brown, which will give us a nice earthy color because I just kind of wanted to blend into the rest of the flagstone. I don't really want it to pop out or anything like that. Okay, I really want to force it in the joints here. That way I don't get any air pockets. I actually do want it to be a little bit proud of the flagstone. And I'll come through when it sets up a little bit more and I will clean it up and knock it down. So now I'm going to use a striker to knock down the grout. You can use the butt of a tool or they actually sell something specifically for this. This is good enough. What I'm doing is I'm using the tool to force the grout in there. And then I'm kind of cleaning up as I go. You gotta be careful not to pull the grout out. So one thing you need to keep in mind is this is a charcoal grill and it cannot sit directly on wood. So what I have is a piece of granite that's non-combustible and then I also have it sitting on a stand that really helps with airflow. So the very last thing that we need to do is to put some plants in. That's really going to help soften this area. It's going to give us a beautiful backdrop to the barbecue as well as it's going to help stabilize the slope. Okay. 
I'm using an asparagus fern and it has a lime green color that's gonna pop really nice against the blue retaining wall. I also have a mint bush in the back that's gonna grow up and cover the chain link fence. So the background of our barbecue area is gonna be full lush and green. All right, that'll do it. We are done with this space. If you remember, it started off with a steep slope and then we had cinder block walls that had pink paint chipping off of it and the barbecue was just sitting on the ground. So by starting off with the retaining, it gave us an opportunity to add some color that contrasts the plants as well as holds the slope up. And then the cinder block wall, we went ahead and covered that with cedar panels and that gives us a nice modern touch. Lastly, the barbecue, lifting that off the ground makes it so much more comfortable to use. So we made it standard countertop height as well as putting together a flagstone top that Gabe on front pulls in those natural elements to make this space interesting as well as functional. So I was able to put all this together with my V20 system from Craftsman, including their drill, their driver, their uh, circular saw, their miter saw, and of course the nail gun, which was my favorite. So what do you guys think? You like how it turned out? Let me know in the comments below.